Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. We have already uploaded a few videos where we talked about the physical significance of this particular equation. We talked about its analytical solution and in the last video we initiated discussion on numerical calculations or numerical methodologies to solve this particular equation. There are various, numer various numerical schemes and we talked about the FTCS method that is forward time central space in the last video. Here we will be talking about the same forward time and central space but we will be developing a python code to make it generalized so that we can have temperature profile for any number of grid points. In the last video we did the calculation using an excel file so that we can have idea of all the steps so that video was very helpful and if you have not watched that video do watch that video and i'll put the link in the description box for your help so let us quickly talk about the physical problem once again so we have a heat conduction unsteady equation so this is the physical scenario heat is getting conducted through this uh, through this rod one dimensional rod where the temperature is initially kept at zero so mathematically this is the initial condition so as you can see at t equal to zero for all x the temperature is zero except at the two corners so at the left corner the temperature is kept at a constant 100 degrees celsius and at the right corner it is t equal to zero it could be any other temperature like 25 degree or something like this so these two are the boundary condition and this is the initial condition so mathematically this is written again the initial condition is for all x at t equal to zero the temperature is zero and at two ends that is the left end and this is the right end temperatures are kept at 100 and zero throughout the simulation for all time so this is the mathematical expression and i have already explained in the last video so we can divide into different grid points so this is the time axis and this is the space axis and we have to solve for this interior grid points so we have to solve for temperature in those grid points and this is the problem and uh, today we'll be writing the code for that and those are the boundary conditions as i have already explained so at the left corner as you see the temperature is always 100 degrees celsius irrespective of the time value and here the initial temperature is zero as you can see uh, from uh, here initial condition and also at the right end the temperature is zero in the previous case that means in the previous video we talked about a zero flux condition however in this particular video we are taking it again simpler so that developing the code becomes easier and maybe the upcoming videos will be working with complicated or difficult boundary conditions but for today we will have two Dirichlet conditions and one initial condition so let us uh, look at the grid once again so the problem is say this particular point uh, in code we will be defining this particular point by two index one index is for the space and the other index is for the time so if this particular point is denoted by i comma k index so i represents the space index and k represents the time index so as we move horizontally the space position changes so i shifts from i to i plus one and if we move in the left hand side then i shifts from i to i minus one similarly the vertical axis for this diagram is the time axis and hence if we shift from this point to that point k also shifts from k to k plus 1 by 1 unit if you drift by 2 unit then it will be k plus 2 so this is how the indexing is done and to implement this index we basically use for loops in uh, numerical codes and i'll be talking about it but just try to look at this diagram suppose this is a point which is given by some i comma k so keeping i equal to constant if we travel through this then my k values will change say k is 1 here this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 
so once I reach up to here then I can come back to here so my i will change from 1 to 2 again for i equal to 2 you will have different k values once you cover it you will come to i equal to 3 and for that you will have different k values so this is how two loops will move around and solve for all the grid points so we will discuss more when we go to the coding interface so the coding we will be doing uh, with google collaboratory uh, this is very much useful because you don't need any external compiler if you have a gmail account then you have access to google collaboratory you just write google collaboratory and this page will come and there there you can actually write your code so for writing this code my purpose was to show you all the steps appropriately however the initial library files which are required i have taken and the things which are required for the plotting purpose i have taken because in this particular video i don't want to talk more about the syntaxes and that's why i have taken the plotting and initial library files but i am uploading videos on python if you want to learn about python then you can now watch my python videos i'll put the video link in the description box so now let us try to understand this particular problem so we have done it in the last video by excel file and i have also uploaded the excel file if you uh, want you can actually have a look at this the video this link is also given in the previous video so you will get the excel file in that video so here uh, if you remember uh, this particular equation actually solve i mean this is valid in the interior grid points and we use this particular equation to solve for the interior points and here we, we will be using this particular equation so before that we have to define all the variables like there is a variable alpha, delta x, delta t. So everything we have to define and then only we can start our code. So initial points are defining all the parameters. So we have, if you see the picture, we have to define how many points we have and for those points, how many uh, boxes we have along each direction that is horizontal and vertical. Suppose in this case we go ahead with so number of grids so initial things is number of grids so say along x we take 40 grids so this is grids along x direction so number of grids you can say this is number of grids so why I write nx just to mention this is along x direction. So similarly nt along t direction let us take 700 grids. So arbitrarily I am taking. So this is number of grids along t direction. So I define my number of grids that means how many points are there if you count here in this excel file 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there were 9 points and for 9 points we had 8 boxes if you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so number of grids is 1 more than number of boxes so now we have to define how many boxes are there along x and, and along t that is your dx so your dx will be for defining your dx you must mention your initial coordinate and final coordinate and the difference between the initial x value and the final x value will give you the length of this particular box and once you know the length you can divide by number of boxes to get your delta x and similarly you can do in y direction to get delta t so let us do it so initially define define the coordinates so say x naught that means the first or the left corner say this is at 0 
and x r this is the right corner say this is point 0.2 say this is 1 not point 0.2 I will take point 0.2 as time now similarly along t direction we have t north that is the initial time say this is 0 and t f that is the final time say this is 0.2 second now once we define this we can define my delta x so delta x I define by dx and my dx can be equal to as I have mentioned difference between these two points final minus initial divided by number of boxes so this difference is x r minus x naught by number of boxes is 1 less than number of grid points I have explained it so in x minus 1 similarly dt will be t final minus t naught by number of grid points in t minus 1 so this defines my dx and dt so once I define this dx and dt what we have we what we have done so far we have told how many grid points are there we have told how many boxes are there we have also told what is the dimension of each box but yet we have to define this coordinates so what is the value at this point what is the value at this particular point so for that what we have to do we have to define a function say lin space so we have to define x span and y span so x span is np dot lin space np is numpy it's a part of numpy library uh, if you look at my python video we will know more about numpy so lin space basically gives not this one so lin space basically gives equally distant points so what we need to do here uh, but before I go there let me show you how lin space works suppose I have a lin space say np dot lin space say this starts from 0 there are and it goes up to say 10 and there are 11 points so if you run it you can see it divides into equal spacing coordinates 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is this works like this so what is our task our task is to divide grids between these two points so x naught and x f and xr and how many points we have in on the grid we have nx points similarly for t span we copy it and do it for the t span so this is time span so it will start from t naught we have already defined t naught it will go up to tf and there will be nt number of points so I run this uh, cell so here what we have done we have defined how many grid points are there we have defined the coordinates and we have also defined the coordinates of the interior points by this thing and for this we need to have the value of dx and dt and that we have already mentioned now let me define the parameter so if you remember there is a parameter alpha and we need to define this so alpha is say 1 here and for alpha you have another coefficient here which is coming in the discretized equation and this is important because when we will be applying this formula we need to have this coefficient that is delta t alpha by delta x square so let me define this coefficient as r which is delta t that is dt into alpha by dx square that is dx into dx so we have defined it I run it again so let me check what is my r value so my r value is coming 0.4 which is good uh, one thing I should tell you here the r should be less than 0.5 otherwise this system will be unstable for FTCS r should be less than 0.5 
and it is less than 0.5 so we are good to go now what we need to do we need to define this matrix because it, this is a matrix form so initially what we can do we can define this kind of matrix and put a zero everywhere and then we calculate one by one and replace this zero by the original values and this is how the code will go and for that what we need to do we need to define a matrix so how we can define so we can define a matrix by np dot zeros so we put it in t t equal to np dot zeros and the dimension would be nx comma nt so this will be your t so what we do we have defined t and we have put zero everywhere so let me just run it and show you so now what we have we have everywhere zero if i write t it will show me the matrix so you see everywhere you have t equal to zero so i have created the matrix now let us fill the values initially we have boundary conditions so let us fill the boundary conditions so boundary conditions so initially let me try to visualize the matrix if i define another matrix say t1 so that is np dot zero say a different number so i just want to visualize the row and column for transparent understanding so if i print t1 so here we write 3 and 2 so if you see 2 means there are 2 rows and 3 columns and in row we have defined nx so row wise we will have the nx that means spatial values and column wise will have the time information so our initial so we have two boundary conditions that is the left corner is kept at 100 degrees so the left corner is defined by 0 comma colon that means all that is in the first row the first row we define by 100 so here the first row i'll show you and the last row and the last row is defined by minus 1 if i write minus 1 it will represent the last one so it will be 0 so this is the boundary conditions and before that we can actually have the initial condition so the initial condition we define initially so this is my initial condition so initial condition is your t everywhere at zero time it will be zero so once we define it our t will change so let us print t again so you can see here now in the first row I have all 100 because now I have defined my boundary condition here so you have to remember this is which boundary condition this is the boundary condition which we have expressed here that is at the left side we have 100 temperature so here we show it in the row instead of column here we define uh, in the row so the row represents the left corner and the, the bottom row represents the right corner so this is zero so the left corner is at 100 the right corner is at zero and in between we have all zeros here because we have initialized the matrix by zero 
but now we have to run these two loops and we have to calculate for the interior points so now calculation for the interior points calculation for interior points so what is the equation if you just remember this is the at an elevated time temperature is equal to the temperature at the bottom level of time plus you have space direction x plus delta x x comma t and x minus delta x so we'll be using this particular equation here so what we are calculating we have to run two loops initially so in python the loop for loop you have to write like this way for k in range k represents the time index so the k goes from 0 to nt minus 1 why nt minus 1 I, I will come to this then we have to have another loop for i this i for the space direction so i will span from 1 to nx minus 1 so this is how the loop will run and we have to calculate the values let's see what happened okay so we didn't write in range we have to write in range yeah now it is okay so we have to calculate for t i k t i k plus one because always we calculate at an elevated time so this is equal to t i k if you remember the equation from the excel file i'll show you again this is t i k then your coefficient and our coefficient is r here and within the bracket what we have we have t at an elevated space that means i plus 1 comma k minus 2 into this one only t i comma k if you remember the equation and then plus t i minus 1 comma k so this is the equation and we have actually written whatever we use in the excel if you just pause the video and try to correlate you can actually correlate so here the loop how the let us just try to visualize how the loop will go so it will start from a index k equal to 0 and then what it will do it will go why it will change the i value one by one so here in this case it will start from t equal to zero and it will go like this so it will start here and it will go like this because i will increase so it once it completes all the i values then it will go to the next t level the next k level and it will run for the other i values and this is how the loop will run and 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 in each step it will calculate for t i k plus 1 that is an elevated time step that is why k starts from 0 so when k is 0 it is actually calculating for k equal to 1 level that is after the 0th time that is the first time step and why it is coming from 1 because at 0th step we already have information and we know the temperature is 100 there and that's why this loop runs from 1 and why again it goes up to nx minus 1 because in the other end also the temperature is 0 this is known from the boundary condition and that is why this loops go this way now I just run all the steps so yeah I run this step this is not required so the calculation is done now i click on the plotting i hope yeah this has come so how the temperature is changing 
सो लेट मी लुक एट द थ्री डी सरफेस प्लॉट फर्स्ट सो दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्सिस रिप्रेजेंट द टेम्परेचर and this particular axis is the time axis and this one is the space axis so now let us visualize from the x equal to 0 so we know from the boundary condition at x equal to 0 the temperature is 100 for all time so if you see here for all time because as we move from here to here we are moving along the time direction so at x equal to 0, temperature is always at 100. Now what we do, <coughs> suppose we are say at 0.25, so this is here. And as we move along the time direction, then the temperature changes. Similarly, if we fix the time and move along the space direction, then the temperature is higher near the left end because the left end is kept at 100 degrees celsius and the temperature is less at the right end because the right end is at zero but initially and initially the temperature throughout the rod was zero except this point but after we simulate we can see the temperature now we have certain temperature at the interior points because heat is flowing and the heat is changing the interior points now what if what we can do is if we actually change the time value then we can see a different nature suppose we solve for 2 seconds if we solve for 2 seconds then we have to run it again so let me run it so r value will change the r value is now more so we have to also change the number of grid points to maintain the r value i guess now r is 0.435 yeah so we define the initial and boundary conditions and then we calculate okay after the calculation i should show you the matrix so you can see if i now plot the matrix so you, we have values in the interior points so this is the matrix and in the interior points we have certain values and this is what the data which we are plotting here so we have changed the time to two seconds so we should change these values as well because we are tuning the axis and the ticks so if i plot now you can see a uh, as time progresses more heat is flowing and you have a different nature initially the nature was different so you can see with respect to time your temperature flow uh, temperature profile is evolving and this is how we can have the time information for the spatial temperature so today i stop here i request you to subscribe to our channel if our videos are helping you and we completed the FTCS method and we'll be coming up with BTCS that is backward time central space in the upcoming video and there are other numerical schemes to solve this particular equation. We'll talk about all the schemes and we'll then compare the efficiency of different numerical methodologies.